This is my sorry for 2004, and I ain't gonna mess up no more this year. I'ma take this one chance and make it real clear. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, sorry, in case I don't tell you. Tell you December, I'm sorry. It's like staying out all night. Hello and welcome to another perfect podcast. I'm your host, the king of YouTube, Pikachu All Spark. And yes, I got a haircut. Isn't it magnificent? And normal sized for a human male like myself? I do think it is indeed. So, let's get right into the podcast and discuss my videos. This week I released video game ten. Wait, no, 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 no. The first thing I released was Lego knockoff unboxing one three thirteen. The final of the Dollar Tree Lego knockoffs. And that video was filmed at the same time as the two episodes before it. So, there's some fun facts. I recorded three unboxings in a row. It was something. Interestingly enough, I recorded the first of the Dollar Tree knockoffs one day before the other three were recorded. Next, let's talk about video game time, beaches. Yes, video game time. I played Super Pac-Man, which has to be one of my favorites of all the Pac-Man games. It's amazing. And yeah. It was a shorter than usual video game time. It was a shorter than usual video game time episode, but... So was the Pac-Man one, so... Hey, when I play a Pac-Man game, you know what you're getting. And yeah. That was that. And now, let's go to a segment. The Kit Kat Big Cat Taste Test. So, for months, I've been seeing commercials for this. The Kit Kat Big Cat. And I couldn't find it anywhere. Not at the local store of which I will not name, not at Walmart, not at nothing. But then I remembered. There is a local store. A different one that sells just about every kind of Kit Kat you can get in America. And there, I found it. The Big Cat. You know, the commercials made this thing seem so much bigger than it actually is. Also, mine's kind of melted a bit. Whoosh. And by melted a bit, I mean, yeah. But it's been refrozen. Sort of. So this Kit Kat appears to be broken into three sections on each bar. So, let's eat it. Yeah, it's just a big Kit Kat. Nothing more than that. Back to the main part of the podcast. And that was the Kit Kat Big Cat Taste Test. You're welcome for that segment. You're fucking welcome. And now, we've gone through just about everything that we can do that isn't this, so let's do it. Smackdown vs. Raw 2016. Wasn't that intro amazing? Now, it might be a new version of the intro, or it might be the same one, depending on how fast I was able to find the new SmackDown and Raw intros and edit a version of my intro together using them. But, if it's the usual intro for this segment, then a new version will be next week with the new intros. So yeah. 
Let's get right into it with the flagship show, Monday Night Raw. Okay, so immediately upon seeing this, we see a new intro, which you already know about, or maybe not, depending on how the intro of this segment goes. The announce table is in a new area over by the entrance stage because they got tired of breaking them, I guess. And the ring ropes are red, which... Why did they ever stop? A anyways... So, Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley start the show out. They invite all the superstars out from the locker room. They announce a new WWE Universal title because SmackDown has the WWE Championship. Then, two Fatal 4 way matches are announced, and the winner of each of those matches competes in the main event. The winner of the main event faces Seth Rollins at SummerSlam, where a champion will be, a champion will be crowned. So, the first of these Fatal 4 way matches starts immediately after this segment with Finn Balor winning against Kevin Owens, Rusev, and Cesaro. So yeah, this is a good match, and it actually meant something, which is a change for Raw. <laughs> Next up, we saw the debut of Nia Jax as she beat someone named Jobber. And this is not the only appearance of a Jobber tonight. Don't have really much to say about the match, I mean... What else can you what can you say about a squash match against a jobber really? Next up, we saw a backstage segment with the Golden Truth and Sasha Banks. They were playing Pokemon Go. That's something they're doing all throughout the night. Next, right after they leave, Sasha Banks gets interviewed about her match. Oh right, I forgot to mention. Women's Championship was announced at the beginning as well. There's a match, Sasha Banks versus Charlie Gay. Forgot to mention that. The next Fatal 4-Way happens. Roman Reigns wins against Sami Zayn, Chris Jericho, and Sheamus. You know, normally right here I'd say fuck Roman Reigns, which, you know, fuck Roman Reigns, but... Just wait. Wait till what happens to him later in the night. Next up, we see the New Day having their celebration. They invite... An audience member, who's totally not a paid actor or anything, into the ring with them. They do comedy. Then the club attacks them. Setting up their next feud. I assume there will be a title match at SummerSlam. Next, Neville beats Curtis Axel. The returning Neville has, you know, Curtis Axel's basically a jobber anyway, so... He's, he's just a named jobber. He's just a jobber that they've signed. Like, when's the last time you saw Curtis Axel win? I can't fucking remember. Next up, we see a backstage segment with the Golden Truth playing Pokemon Go next to Darren Young and Bob Backlund. So yeah, it's one of them comedic segments. I can't quite remember it, even though I'm recording this Tuesday night. Fuck. Next, we see Charlotte interviewed about the championship match about the championship match backstage. So that happens. Next up, the commercial break. Then after the commercial break, we see Sasha Banks winning the women's championship against Charlotte. We have a new champion. Finally. Charlotte won the championship at like uh I think Night of Champions is when she won the original Divas title before the Women's won in Mania. Uh, it was either Night of Champions or Hell in a Cell last year. And yeah, she's been champion since then. What do I think of really long title reigns? Fuck them. Unless, of course, AJ Lee is doing them. Then allow her to do that. Allow her to do anything. Please come back. Next up, alright, Byron interviews her after the match, she says stuff, 
I, it was an in-ring, an in-ring interview, I can't remember what she said. Next, Braun Strowman beat a jobber. They interviewed the jobber before the match. He seemed terrified. Rightfully so, he's facing the human no-selling machine known as Braun Strowman. No. Like, did you see when Brock was at the Rumble? Ah, fuck. Everyone's forgotten that by now, except for Lesnar. Next up, we see Enzo and Cass beat the Shining Stars. With the Golden Truth interfering during the match. They're playing Pokemon Go still. They get all up in the ring. <laughs> what? It was funny, I give them that. And the Shining Stars just debutted a few months ago, and they're already jobbers. Hey, here's what here's my impression of Vince next to the Shining Stars right now. This is also my impression of Vince next to the VOD villains right now. Next up, we see a backstage segment with Roman Reigns and Finn Balor talking to each other before their big match in the main event. Then after that, we get our main event. Finn Balor beats Roman Reigns, and is the number one contender for the WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam. He will face Seth Rollins. And interestingly enough, this is Finn Balor's first night on Raw, and he gets a title shot. What? Is this the first time this has happened? I don't think so. It certainly happened at some point. And next, and now let's get into... Smackdown Live. There's a new intro and the ring ropes are blue. So that's a positive change. Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan start out the show. They're talking to everyone around the ring. They announce a battle royal. And the winner of the battle royal will face five other competitors in the main event. The winner of that main event will face Dean Ambrose at SummerSlam for the championship. At least... I think, pretty sure that's how that goes. So, Apollo Crews wins it. Our main event battle royal is, our main event six man match is set. I believe it was John Cena, AJ Styles, uh, Dolph Ziggler, Apollo Crews. There's two more. I'll, I'll get them. Uh, uh, fuck. I didn't write all the names down, so, fuck. Oh, wait. Okay, Baron Corbin was one of them. I can't remember the last one, but, okay. Anyways, uh, Apollo was interviewed after the match, and I'm probably going to stop talking about these after-match interviews, because they seem to be a regular occurrence and not a weird thing anymore, so, yeah. Next, we see a commercial for Shelton Benjamin. You know, that guy you skipped over in WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. Yeah, you're looking through who you're going to play as. You see Shelton Benjamin. Then you see somebody who's more famous. You know how that goes. But yeah, he returns. I haven't seen him for a while. What's he been doing? Who fucking knows? Next up, we get a Dolph Ziggler green screen segment. I mean, green screens are fucking tacky. Who even uses them? T turn the fucking effect back on. Anyways. Next up, Becky Lynch beats Natalia because the other way around happened at Battleground. Then, all of the females come out and that happens. I mean, why? Who fucking knows? But yeah, that happened. Then we see a Baron Corbin green screen segment. He talks about the match. Ziggler talked about the match in the earlier one. Next up, Miz TV with Randy Orton. Randy Orton makes a masturbation joke during that. 
You're not supposed to do that on a PG show, Randy. Ha 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 you silly fuck. Next up. Randy Orton has a match with The Miz, and he beats him. Can you guess how we beat him? That's right. With a pile driver. Next up. American Alpha has a promo, and they're going to debut next week. We saw Miz TV when we could have seen American Alpha. Just, just drink that in, man. What the fuck? What the fuck? Next up, Heath Slater comes out. He's saying, hey, what the fuck? Why didn't you draft me, bitch? Hashtag sign Heath Slater. Then Rhino attacks Heath Slater, making his 2016 SmackDown debut. Next, we see an AJ Styles green screen segment. The last green screen segment before the match. Thank fuck. But hey, they did something to promote the match, I guess. Then, Dolph fucking Ziggler, Ziggy himself, wins the match. He is the number one contender for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. And that was SmackDown. So, which show won this week? It was Raw. We all know Raw won. Raw was definitely better than SmackDown this week. SmackDown, what are you doing? All throughout the show, Byron Sexton was calling it the A Show, and it did not fucking... It was not the A Show this week. So, yeah, that was SmackDown vs. Raw 2016. And with that, I guess the podcast is now over. So, let's have a look back at some of the best moments from tonight's show. So I guess I really am smart. Well, follow me while I ride home on Ashman's invisible motorcycle. I caught the brakes. <laughs> I truly hate Ashman. Ah, memories. Good night, kids. Go read a book. Girl, this is my sorry for 2004, and I ain't gonna mess up no more this year.